Allison, I want to start with you. I was so intrigued to learn NASA is not some thing that you just learned about to write this movie. It's in your blood. Your grandparents worked at NASA, and you've also been very involved in these kinds of issues as well. Tell us about that. Yes, I grew up outside Cape Canaveral, and my grandfather worked on the Mercury capsule, and my grandmother showed up to bring him lunch one day and saw a sign that said, learn how to use computers, and so she became a programmer at NASA. And then when I was in eighth grade, they recruited uh, dorks like me, who were good at math and science, to work at NASA. So I spent all of high school busing up there and working everything from programming to building circuit boards to the payload bay. So it's been amazing to work on this project. So at what point did you hear about these three women? Did it take the book that was written about them for you to know their story? It did. Essentially, Donna Gelati had optioned uh, the book from Margot and called my manager and said, do you know anyone that can write math and science? And he said, I have someone that worked at NASA. <laughs> uh, and so they sent me the story, and I just thought, how is this possible? We don't know these women. And I knew women and diversity had been a big part of NASA, but I'd never heard these three stories before. Jenna, what intrigued you and Peter Chernin about the script that you read and the story that you heard? Well, we had made a movie with Ted Melfi, his first movie, St. Vincent. So Ted Melfi intrigued us, first <laughs> of all, before I had read the script. Um, and then we read the script, and it's just, you know, it's undeniable. Um, when you read something like this and you realize you don't know anything about it, and how could that possibly be true? And the characters were so compelling, and, you know, it just felt like an inevitable must do film. And Ted, I'm such a fan of St. Vincent, your film with Bill Murray and Melissa McCarthy and Naomi Watts was so great. This is so different. What were you excited to, to take on as far as a different tone and a different kind of story from your last film? Uh, well, I mean, I, I, when I first read the script, it was, it was very dramatic and Allison done a, had done an amazing job with the characters, but I wanted to infuse a sense of comedy in it because um, that's just how I see life, right? Uh, I, th I think life is very funny for some reason. <laughs> no, but my mom would always tell me growing up, you don't have to make time for um, for tears. You know, tears are born, tears come, they come with life. Someone's going to get sick, someone's going to die. You're going to fail at times. Thanks, mom. But anyway, um, <laughs> I just thought of that. <laughs> so, uh, but you have to make time for laughter, right? You have to make time to find laughter. So I wanted to infuse a sense of comedy into what Allison had had already did, and so I tried to blend the two of them, um, and it gave me a chance to work on both aspects of myself, comedic side and dramatic side, so it was very challenging. Taraji, you were very fortunate in that of the three lead characters, the woman that you play, Katherine Johnson, is the one that's still with us. What were you able to learn by talking to her and talking to her family members? Um, I just learned that during a time where she had all the obstacles stacked against her. The women never complained. Um, when I spoke to her, you know, I'm a modern day woman. I have a lot of attitude and I'm gonna tell you what's on my mind. <laughs> and back then you did not have that luxury, you know, because you could very well be strange, strange fruit hanging from a tree. So what I found very interesting is that I tried to make it about that. And I was like, but wasn't it hard? And you didn't have your rights. And, and she just, you know, she's like, that's just the way things were. I just put my head down and I went to work. And, you know, I think about me in this industry and, you know, I always get asked the question, um, you know, how it's so hard for black women in the industry. And, you know, if I chose to make that my story, would I own six properties? You know what I mean? Now, I may have not always been number one on the call sheet, but maybe I wasn't ready. You know, but I don't, you know, I, I loved, that's the one thing I took away from her. Don't complain about the obstacles. We all have obstacles. Are you going to be a part of the problem of the solution? Mm. And the only way you're a part of the solution is you got to do the work, <laughs> you know, and then you look up one day and the accolades come. And, you know, she didn't expect this. She was just going to work every day, thankful to God that she had a job and the career that she studied. She never walked in like, yeah, I'm going to change the world. You know, it just happened. And she was prepared and opportunity met preparation. And she changed, they changed the course of history. And that can happen when you pay attention to finding solutions. 
one physical move that you do as Catherine is the you know the pushing up of the glasses, and I just love it every time you do it. It's like an exclamation point to a sentence, but it also kind of like reminds us all of the nerdiness. Is was that based in fact, or is that something that you guys decided to do? Well, I only well yes, that was with the help of Ted. He was fascinated with the whole glasses thing. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, when you're studying a person, what we I only had like an hour and a half maybe two hours with her mm. when we went to meet her. And so I was like a little sponge. I watched everything. And I just um, remember her mannerism was just very, um, you know, she's, she's 98 now, so she's very fragile, but that mind is very sharp. <laughs> she had Scrabble game, Monopoly underneath her sofa. I was like, I would love to play Scrabble with her. She kicked my butt, but... <laughs> <laughs> No, but um, you know, I had a, I just had a, a little amount of time to like pay attention to her, so I never took my eyes off of her. And then to have her family come up to me like, "Oh my God, you played my grandma to a T!" Like all of her mannerisms, and just like, "Wow, I was really paying attention, huh?" I guess. <laughs> and Octavia, I love, I love the character of Mrs. Vaughn because she walks this line of advocating for herself and asserting what she wants and also for all the women that she's looking after, but also doing it in a delicate way so as not to upset an apple cart, right? What did you find fascinating about her and the way that she carried herself in the workplace? She and I are so different. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> well, like Taraji said, we're, we're contemporary women and we're so used to being able to say what we need uh, because we have that agency that they did not have uh, in that time period. But playing Dorothy taught me so much about having a voice and uh, how Ted directed this film, the way the script was set up. What I'm learning with what's happening in the world right now is that confrontation does not lead to solving uh, problems. Because if you have a finger in your face constantly, you are not going to hear the other person. But if that fin the finger is down and you just have a conversation, you're more apt to hear. And uh, I learned that about that quiet resolve that these women had. And it, it just made me realize that, you know, there is a responsibility that we have, but also how to navigate things that you don't have to be confrontational and still be effective. Peter, the film so deftly goes back and forth between the workplace for these three women and also their home lives. Can you talk about what your goals were as far as cutting back and forth between those two milieu? And then also, did you cut differently within a work scene and a home scene? Did you want to give it a more leisurely pace, for instance, in the domestic scenes? Yeah. No, not really. Um, the thing that's most important to me is that things be authentic. And the, if the performances are authentic, then the audience is just um, into the film and they're not thinking about the film, they're just having it unfold. And that's all that really mattered to me. Um, <laughs> the balancing of the scenes was a lot of fun because the script was written, you know, obviously when you have three stories, you have to cross cut and you have to find that right balance. But also Ted and I realized there's a fourth story, which is the NASA story. So there's really four that have to be balanced. And really, it was just a matter of every time we would watch the movie, we would scrutinize it. And as we were honing it down, realizing, you know, there was one cut we had, I think the movie was about two hours and 15 minutes. And it dawned on us after a screening, Octavia kind of disappeared for a while. Like all of a sudden, she was gone for like over a half hour. And it was like, that ain't right. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. That was the edit I did. <laughs> <laughs> So we just wanted to find that balance, and uh, hopefully, hopefully we did. Jeno, how did you guys bring Pharrell Williams on board? Well, he actually uh, had met Donna Gelati, our our co-conspirator, very early on in the process, and and was from the area and was aware of the story, and we were working with Pharrell on a, on another project and Mimi, so we already loved them, and it just you know, all happened organically. And Ted, the music is so amazing, obviously, and it's so unique. I mean, so that's Benjamin Walfish and Hans Zimmer and Pharrell Williams together who did the score and the soundtrack. What were the, the conversations you all had about what you wanted the music to provide? Uh, when I first met Fer Pharrell, I said, um, I want the music to harken back to the 50s and 60s, but not 
be the 50s and 60s, be something, mo a modern take on that, have like a, a his modern tone in that style. Uh, and he had already been starting on some of that stuff, just on a whim. Um, and then he read the script and he wrote, he said, you know, the, Kevin Johnson runs to the bathroom 20 minutes back and forth. And I said, yeah. And so he wrote Running like the next week. And then he wrote I See a Victory um, uh, slightly thereafter. So, and then, and then we didn't have a composer. And Pharrell says, what do you think of, uh, do you have a composer? I said, not really yet. He goes, what do you think of Hans Zimmer? And I go, well, I guess, right? <laughs> He's available. <laughs> uh, and then Hans brought Ben Walfish. And they, were, they said, this music... They kept saying this over and over again. This music doesn't exist. We're going to take something, because Hans does, you know, classic. Hans is German, does classic kind of Euro music, right? And mix that with Pharrell, and that really does not exist. Um, and they kept saying, we want female voices. So you're hearing a lot of female voices in there in the choir and, and just throughout. That's Kim Burrell, uh, an amazing female vocalist. Yeah. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> He's trying to give an yeah. interview here, Octavia. Yeah, <laughs> and so that's how it all... Well, I realized that. Part. All of the press we did, this is the first time we're hearing that. <laughs> wow, still stuff yeah. to learn. Yeah, Kim, Kim Burrell's like her, she's singing or humming over the rockets in space and the capsule in that space. And so that added that feminine touch. Uh, we really wanted it to be from a woman's point of view as much as possible. Allison, I, another framing device that I love in the script is this, the, these moments where Catherine approaches a chalkboard. And it happens, I think, three different times, and it's just so powerful, especially because we see it as her as a little kid. Where did that framing device come in in your process? Just when I was looking at the archive footage, that was where you saw them a lot of the time was at the chalkboard, and so I was like, okay, this is where they live, this is where they think, this is where they do their work, and it was something that I remember even growing up and and seeing my father and my grandfather all working on it, and then I. I think one of the big things for me when I got this was I wasn't too interested in their love lives at the beginning. For me, I was like, this is a movie about their profession and their minds and their math. And I was able to pull from my own experiences. So the scene with Janelle Monet, I was saying to Octavia earlier, where she comes in and the professor says, I don't know how to teach a woman, happened to me when I was studying you know, math in college. And so it always came back to put him in front of those numbers and show them doing the work. The, the last thing I want to ask you about is one particular scene, that, which is that great kind of monologue that Catherine des, uh, delivers when she's completely fed up about the bathroom situation. And I love that moment. It's just so expertly done on your part. And it's the one time where we really see her express all of the frustration and emotion. What was it like to do that scene in contrast to all of the others where you really had to keep it all pent up? Well, that was that was definitely her her uh, her her climatic moment. You know, um, that was her breaking point. Every every human has one. I don't care how zen you are or how controlled you are. At the end of the day, you are human, and we all have that snapping point. And she just snapped. And you know, it wasn't even about a complaining. It was just. You know, I th for me as an actor, where I started was as a lady, as a woman. You know, we, we spend so much time making ourselves so pretty. So it wasn't even about the running for her. It was walking back into that room looking like a wet puppy. All of her efforts, her hair, I mean, she was totally vulnerable. And that's where I started, walking into the room with a room full of men, mm. and you're just so vulnerable, sopping wet. I mean, that's I started there, and it just kind of escalate it from there. Well, it's a powerful moment in a wonderful film. I congratulate all of you, and thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Th